Well, today we're talking about geese. And even though it's spring, we're in the midst of sort of breeding season, all that sort of stuff. We haven't really talked about the geese in a little while. And I think the big reason for that is there's not a lot to talk about most of the time because geese are very unlabor intensive and very simple at a small scale. Big stately birds walking across a nice green area of grass. Which, of course, is the biggest plus to geese. Although, I would suggest they can't just eat grass, and uh, I could go into a much deeper topic on that, but uh, they are about the only bird that can readily consume grass and uh, other plants as the bulk of their diet. So right now, we have four pairs of geese. And they're all in various stages of basically breeding. Uh, we have one hen, I'll show you in a minute, or one goose I should say, who's uh, already sitting. We have two who are getting really close, they're starting to think about it. Uh, and then we have another pair, which is the ones we're uh, standing out in front of their little coop right now, who uh, haven't been so lucky. So here you can see the nest inside this building. Now this building is not very big, but this is a bit of a problem because this hen, unfortunately, for us, keeps losing her eggs to the ravens. And I'll show you the outside and what we've tried to do and uh, what's not working. So here's the building from the outside. These were originally built when we had our ducks. They worked really well as winter coops for ducks, actually. But we've been trying to use this particular one for the geese. And the problem is they have a fairly big door. The geese don't mind coming and going through it, but to try to avoid the raven issues, we've closed it partially because typically they will think twice about going in. But uh, our one of our two resident pairs of ravens have obviously figured this out. So unfortunately, this pair who's wandering off there uh, right now is not likely going to produce any goslings for us. And uh, that is one of the things about geese from sort of, I guess, a negative, is you do need reasonably substantial infrastructure. Now, they do work quite well with larger animals like sheep, uh, even horses, etc. And you can use a lot of that infrastructure kind of interchangeably. But uh, yeah, geese are big birds and uh, they need sort of big buildings. So although we're starting this video on a little bit of a downer, I suppose, we're kind of going from worst to best. But the one thing that's nice about geese in our opinion, for what that's worth, is compared to pretty much any other poultry, as long as you have the space that you can sort of do this sort of thing here, pasture them, if they don't produce maximum volume, volume of uh, young in a given year, it really doesn't matter the same way as it does with other poultry or livestock. So from a survival perspective, you obviously want them, to produce goslings because you want the geese to, to be able to eat in the fall but uh, they don't necessarily have to be super productive every year to uh, earn their keep so now we're on to our second pair and uh, this is a young 2022 gander who's paired with an older hen who she has done been there done that before and uh, these two get along really well actually it's really interesting the social dynamics of this pair he uh, wanted to be paired up with her when he was quite young and he was very adamant about it. Not in an aggressive way, but, and uh, so was she. So basically they got their wish. So this pair has decided through their own sort of accord to nest in our sheep barn. You can see her eggs over there in the corner. I'm gonna actually cover them up a bit better. But uh, oddly enough, She's done quite well in here with some of the larger animals, i.e. The, the sheep and whatnot, because, uh, well, they don't really get into the corner and uh, taking a bit of a risk, but so far it's working pretty well. So she has eight eggs in there. So she's getting pretty close, I would imagine, to uh, sitting. This is the one sort of downside to geese, is they can take a little while to fill the nest to the point that they're happy with it, which, pending your weather, if you're really hot, etc., that can be a bit of an issue, but uh, we've been fairly cool. Now, of course, you don't want to be freezing, so there's kind of this, what do you call it, catch-22 with geese that uh, sometimes they'll start laying when it's a little cool, and uh, if it's too cold, that could ruin your eggs. But if it's too warm, that could also be an issue. 
if they take too long to fill the nest. So next we're going into the barn where our third pair of geese have decided to nest. Well, basically they always decide to nest in the barn. It's actually quite funny. So this is Romeo and Juliet's nest. For anybody who's followed along with us for a little while, they're kind of the, I don't know, best pair of geese we have here on the farm. This is a good example of a few things. So she has nine eggs. So again, she's getting close to uh, potentially sitting here. And the one thing about geese, or at least the American buff geese, they're pretty attentive. Like they do rotate the eggs and everything that they're supposed to do every day. Now, this is a good example of a bit more of an ideal situation. We have a frame around this. So we use just a two by four frame. I think it's about two feet by two feet. Nothing elaborate. But that allows us to basically put a nest in a corner like this and uh, keep it there. <laughs> Even though you did see uh, the other geese have pretty decent nests in them regardless. But the other thing that's interesting about this particular nest is we've actually moved her. We had her in a different box stall. And because we wanted the box stall for some other purposes. Now she hasn't sat yet, but we were able to take her nest. I think she only had about seven eggs or so at the time. I don't remember exactly, but... We moved her nest from that box stall into this one. We just kind of picked up the eggs when she wasn't around, brought them in here, and uh, put them back in this corner. And she accepted it no problem. She's kept laying, and I'm pretty sure we're getting pretty close to sitting. So, although this may not be something you can do all the time, it does prove, at least in principle, that uh, unlike ducks, which I'm going to suggest in our long history of raising ducks, moving a duck nest was not an easy task. That uh, if you need to, if your geese are relatively easy to work with, you can move a nest. The tip, though, is, for those of you who have made it to this part of the video, don't do it when they're present. <laughs> because they're not going to be happy with you playing with their eggs. But uh, as you saw, when we showed the four geese out on the, on the grass there, they're out of the barn. So it's a great time to do that. So last but not least, we're headed out of the barn into the pen that has basically all of our uh, ewes in it. And uh, they're offspring to look at our last pair of geese who are the ones who are actually sitting right now so before i even go over you can see all the icelandic ewes with their lambs and a few of them still in waiting and over there there's another little building and uh you can see the one gander he's standing out in front that's where our sitting goose is so as i approach he's going to uh do his normal gander thing and a lot of people would consider this to be aggressive and horrible and etc. But as you can see, he's not exactly that intimidating, but he's intimidating enough. And that's a good thing because he will keep predators away from the nest, but he also fends off the sheep. Now there's a pretty, uh, what would you call that, easy truce between the geese and the sheep here, uh, which is actually kind of interesting. Now the one thing I will say is a disclaimer, you may not want to let your geese sit a clutch of eggs when you have other larger livestock because it's hard to control the larger livestock not trampling them. But this gander does a pretty good job of uh, sort of keeping them at bay to a degree. So I'm not going to go in and bugger too much, but there she is. You can hear the gander in the background. He's a little more bark than bite, but uh, she's quite contently sitting on the eggs there. You can see the down that she's pulled around there, which definitely helps insulate them. That's one sort of cue uh, that they're getting ready to sit, is when they start pulling a bit of down, because usually they'll start a day or two before, and then uh, then they'll decide to sit. So I'm going to leave her be, and uh, we should have goslings in the next month or so. Interaction between gander and sheep. It's not a lot of excitement. You can see nobody's really too concerned. So there you go. That's just a little bit of an update, I guess. More of a story than anything else. There's a little bit of tidbits of stuff in there, I suppose. But I think the closing comment for me is... Yes, geese may not be the high-producing poultry uh, that we've all become so accustomed to in modern times, but they're still very productive, and if you're set up for it, they take a lot of the pressure off, which makes it very easy, for lack of a better way to put it. 
like I say, if they don't produce a million babies, it doesn't really matter because what you're going to get at the end of the year is uh, still going to be worthwhile. So stay tuned for more goose content because when we've got more to talk about, we will definitely have more videos on them. Especially cute goslings. Yes, which should be coming probably around the end of May.